Hi, Joey from Powerhouse Affiliate. Today I want to talk about how to avoid getting your Google Ads account suspended, and if you are suspended, how you can potentially get your account back. Today I'm going to talk about common reasons why affiliates especially are getting banned on Google Ads. I'm going to talk about ways to avoid this and if you are already suspended, I'm gonna show you ways on how to fix that and potentially get your account back. I've spent millions of dollars on Google Ads. You can see my other videos on this channel where I speak about other strategies for Google search ads. You can also check the link down in the description for our latest course, the 30-day challenge for Google Ads. Be sure to check that out if you want more strategies on how you as an affiliate marketer or a marketer in general can set up 100% compliant ad campaigns on Google search ads and see success over years. Now, let's talk about the most common reasons why people are getting banned on Google Ads. The number one reason why people are getting their Google Ads account suspended is because they're being lazy. They're not building a real business and they're not building a website that is compliant for Google. You see, Google just wants people to be happy when they search and they find something and they click on an ad or a, an organic result. They want people to go to a website that has a contact us page, that has an about page. They want people to be able to contact the business. And if you're running ads on Google, make sure you're not lazy and you create a website that is compliant. Make sure that your website has the bare minimum privacy policies, about pages, maybe a contact us form, very important, and your terms of service, okay? So that is the number one reason why a lot of people are failing right out of the get-go because they are not doing this much needed work at the start. Another major reason why people get suspended from Google Ads is because they are signing up from a location that is not normally their location where they do business. So when you're signing up for your Google Ads account, you should be signing up for an MCC account so that you can create multiple sub accounts underneath that. In order to do that, you need to have a real business. This helps a lot because now you can create multiple accounts underneath and you can start running multiple different campaigns in different accounts so that if one account gets banned, you're not going to lose your entire MCC account unless you're really doing bad things on a lot of accounts and then you're gonna lose the entire thing. But when you're signing up for this, make sure you're doing it from your own personal address, your own personal computer. Don't do it when you're on vacation in some other country and you think, hey, this is a great idea, I'm gonna sign up for Google Ads now. Make sure you're at home where you're doing business. This is very important because if you don't, you're going to immediately get banned for circumventing systems or some kind of weird ban where, they, where you're flagging something, and as soon as you start creating flags on Google, you are going to be in a world of hurt trying to get back into their good books. So, that is very important. Next, do not use virtual credit cards when you sign up for Google Ads. This will result in a suspension or a circumventing systems ban instantly, again, resulting in flags, and now you're gonna be really hard pressed to, to get back on their good books because you signed up, you gave them all of your information and now you try to use a virtual credit card. Now there's nothing wrong with virtual credit cards in real life, but on the internet when you're signing up for ad accounts anywhere, just don't use these cards because it flags for a potential circumventing systems ban. Another very common reason why affiliate marketers especially are getting banned from Google Ads is because they are using an affiliate tracker that flags for malicious software. This is a terrible type of ban because you've done everything right and you put your tracking onto your website, all of a sudden you submit it to Google and now it's flagged for malicious software resulting in a ban and now you don't know what to do. Well, let me tell you what to do if that does happen. There are ways that you can search your website before you submit it to Google for uh, review on your ads. If you submit your site to the Google Search Console, and you look at the site issues before you submit your ads to Google, you can potentially stop getting banned for malicious software because it'll detect it on the search console before you submit it to Google Ads. This is very important because a lot of times what will happen is when you put that code onto your website, 
Google's automatic bots will start to think that you have some suspicious code on your landing page resulting in what we've seen is circumventing system or a malicious software ban. Sometimes they will mistaken that code for cloaking software, which other affiliates have been using when they're doing black hat. I do not recommend you do any type of black hat marketing, especially when you're running on Google, um, because they will detect it and they will catch you and then you will lose your account forever. Another common reason why affiliates get banned is because of the types of offers they are running. A lot of affiliates run CPA affiliate offers from affiliate networks. And what affiliate networks do is they have global redirects. These types of redirects will redirect the offer link to a different offer if your traffic isn't from the country that is allowed. So for example, if you're running an offer from say Max Bounty and the offer only accepts US traffic, if some traffic comes from say India or Canada, it'll redirect that traffic to another offer that is available in Canada or India, we'll say. And many times these offers are very sketchy types of offers. They are either casino offers or really random offers that don't often follow the rules of Google. So if you have an ad reviewer looking at your campaign and they go through your landing page and your funnel and all of a sudden, let's say they're in a different country, they're reviewing from whatever country, and they go to a different offer completely from your landing page, that'll immediately trigger a ban. And this can be caught by bots too. It doesn't have to be a reviewer looking at your, your ad. They can tell basically through AI whether or not your, your campaign is compliant and you can automatically get banned just for uh, potential redirects. So to fix that, there are ways to do that. And we, we describe that fully in our tracking part of our course on how to make sure that these redirects are not happening. Another very common reason why people are getting banned on Google is because they're simply not reading the rules, especially affiliate marketers who are not reading the rules of prohibited content, things you can and cannot run on Google ads, and these rules are changing every single year. Make sure you stay informed of these rules, read them regularly, stay uh, informed by signing up to whatever types of notifications you can get from Google, pay attention to all those little notices on top of your account, make sure that you are not running any types of offers that might even be mistaken for something that is banned. Now for affiliate marketers, we like to test multiple campaigns, especially when we're running ads. So sometimes it'll result in us testing so many different types of niches that we might potentially hit one niche that flags um, a potential ban. Now, in order to prevent your entire account from being banned, let's go back to what I mentioned earlier about MCC accounts and setting up sub accounts. Sometimes you'll, you'll want to s separate different sub accounts into different domains. This is a very good strategy, especially when you're running multiple different campaign styles. You could have one domain on each sub account and then you can test new things on different sub accounts and keep your really active campaigns safe from that. And be careful because once you get one account suspended, you need to be very careful not to keep doing this because you will eventually be removed from Google ads completely. So be very careful when you're doing this. And we had a question in the forum the other day, should I buy aged domains for my Google ads account? And I think that is a bad idea especially if you are not sure if that domain has already been flagged on Google ads and that could potentially result in an immediate ban for you. So I would use fresh new domains, create the website, don't be lazy, put some content on there and do all of the work required. Okay, so those are all the reasons why you could potentially get banned, but what happens when you actually log in and you see that dreaded red warning at the top that says your account has been suspended for whatever reason it is, Usually the first reaction is to panic and immediately appeal and say, what, what did I do? But that is not what you should do. And let me just explain this, why? A lot of times we think, hey, I'm doing everything right. This has got to be a mistake. There's a, this is a flag for no reason. I'm just going to appeal it. And what happens is you immediately lose the appeal. Nine times out of 10, you've probably done something wrong and you don't even know it. 
The first thing I would do is look at the reason for the ban. If it's a circumventing systems ban, this usually is a result of some type of redirects happening on your website, or maybe you used a wrong address, you logged in with a fake IP address because you forgot to log out of your VPN. All of the things around circumventing systems usually is something not related to your marketing objectives or whatever it is. Now, the other type of ban where you're looking at malicious software, that's another really common ban for affiliates, usually is the result, like I said earlier, of some type of code on your landing page. So the first thing you need to do is go into the search console, figure out what happened, why there is a code, and remove that immediately from your website, fix up your content, Make sure everything is compliant, look at all of the rules of Google and try and figure out what went wrong before you even think about appealing. Now, another thing you do not wanna do right now is create a new account. Do not try to create a new account. This is very bad for you to do because what's gonna happen is you're going to be immediately flagged again for circumventing systems. They have very sophisticated ways of figuring out who you are, where you are, all of these things that you think you might be able to fake, but you cannot. So make sure you do not do that and just do all of the steps in trying to recover your existing account. Once you've fixed all of the things that you think you've, you've found on your website and you're following all of the rules, then it is time to submit your appeal. Make sure when you are submitting your appeal, you are kind, you tell them the reasons you think it happened, what you did to fix those problems, and what you will do in the future to not make it happen again. Make sure you are not lazy here again and give them a lot of information, as much information as you can, so that you can potentially convince the human on the other end to give you your account back. Because really at the end of the day, it is a human being and they can look at this and say, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Let's give him another chance or her and let's see if they'll make the same mistakes. So that is the, the process for trying to get your account back. But whatever you do, do not try and create a new account. Now, if that is all completely failing for you, then you need to go and do some research on how <clears throat> to potentially set up a business and start over again with Google. And that is not the content of this video on how to circumvent. So this is something that you need to really do some research on and figure out how you can potentially not make the same mistakes or maybe even look into getting an agency to do the ads for you and working through an agency. Hopefully this video has been informative for you. If it has, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this channel. Don't forget to check out the course down below for more access to how we run campaigns, how affiliates are spending millions of dollars on Google ads compliantly, and the sample campaigns of what is actually happening out there, the ads, the landing pages, the tracking, how we set up compliant legal pages, everything you need to know about Google ads in that course. Check it out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.